Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be very short and quick. I've got some special candles to make for one of my husband's co-workers and I thought I would bring you all along with me. So let's get started. Today I'm going to be using a coconut apricot luxury candle wax. I absolutely love this wax. It's silk, it's luxury, it has a little bit of paraffin in it, not much, but paraffin does have a stronger heat throw than soy wax, so that helps. But with this wax, I've never had wet spots. All the wax adheres to the jar. And I've also noticed like my sinkholes are probably minimum to none. So I absolutely love this wax. Fireball Whiskey. Yes, this is the fragrance oil they requested. But let's smell this Fireball Whiskey. Whoa. Oh gosh, yeah, that smells just like a Fireball. Let's get started and let's melt this wax. I'm only going to make a half batch today, so that's three candles. So let's begin. First, I'm going to lay out my wax. And that's pretty good. First cut. I weighed out the exact amount that I need. So now I've got my wax weighed out. I'm gonna add it to my wax melter. And while my wax is melting, I'm gonna prep my jars. When you order your jars, they usually come in these cardboard boxes. So sometimes they may have a little bit of debris on the inside. So I just get alcohol and a paper towel and just wipe down the inside especially the bottom because you want to make sure that wick sticker stays in place next i'm going to place my wicks onto my wick stickers dandy wick placement tool thingamajiggy. Absolutely love this thing. I don't have to worry about centering my wick because it fits, it fits perfectly on my nine ounce jars. Just peel that off. And there's a small hole right here that your wick goes through. And you thread that through. And there's a magnet on that circle that will stick to the metal part of that wick and it won't come out and this wick placement device fits perfectly for this nine ounce jar that i got from candle science because it has different steps right there then all you do is and you can pump it down a couple times just press it really good there's your wick and you can test it to make sure that it doesn't come out. It's not coming out. That's perfect. So now I'm gonna do the other two jars. I love it because it takes out any guessing if it's being centered or if it's pressed in hard. got my three jars with the wicks in there perfectly centered. Let's set these aside and I'm going to weigh out my fragrance oil. And I like to keep my tops. I've ordered some and I've saved some from other fragrance oils. 
because if you notice, some fragrance oils from certain companies come with a twist top and fragrance oil is not cheap, so you can spill it very easily. So in order to prevent that, I just replaced the twist top with one of my pop tops. And you can save those from other fragrance oil tops that you get. I think Nature's Garden sends you tops that spout up like that, so I would just save them. Or you can get a bundle from Amazon. And that's where I got an order from, for like pennies. And it's so worth it so that you're not wasting and smelling fragrance oil. All right, so let's weigh this fragrance oil. Now let me just clear off this area and check the temperature of my wax. So with this particular candle wax, I can usually heat it up to about 190 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and add my fragrance oil, stir it, maybe two minutes, and the pouring temperature that's recommended is 180 to 190 degrees. So this thermometer only measures surface temperature, so you're gonna wanna stir your wax a little bit and then take your measurement. We're going to add our fragrance oil. And since this is a fireball fragrance oil, I wanna see if I can color this a bright red. Now that I read that just adding red dye is not gonna make it a bright red, it'll just make it maybe a dark deep pink. So it was recommended to also add a few drops of orange And when I color my candles, I also like to add UV inhibitor. UV inhibitor is good for blocking UV rays that can cause your color on your candle to fade. So while as a manufacturer of these candles, you may store it in a cool, dark place if you're wholesaling to a store, they may have them posted in the window and your candles will start to fade and not look pleasing, which may result in a decline in sales. So, all right, so we're at 180. It is cool enough to pour. I always wipe my container down while the wax is still hot because it makes it so much easier to clean. Perfect. So that was super easy, right? I love these little clothespins, the plastic ones especially. I just thread the wick through that silver hole and then I twist the wick around and clamp it between here and my wicks are perfectly centered. They don't move. They're taut, they're tight, they're stable. All right, there they go.
So while my candles are hardening, I'm gonna be very careful not to touch this table. I don't want any rippling, I don't want any sinkholes, nothing. But I do have a shipping station that I need to put together, so I think I'll go ahead and do that. I really thought this packing station was bigger than this, but it is not. <laughs> it's maybe five feet tall, so I don't know. Maybe I'll get a taller one, or maybe I'll put a pegboard in the back, but it's gonna work for now. Oh my God, look at those candles. Now, is that red or is that red? That's red. Who would have thought orange plus red would equal bright red? If you're trying to get a bright red candle, don't keep adding red dye. Just put a couple of drops of red and a couple of drops of orange and bam, you've got a bright red. Okay. Let's go ahead and make these babies pretty. Oh. I like to get rid of any sinkholes and deformation at the top. I like to do that before they're completely solidified because I feel like it blends together better. Okay, and I'm gonna let these set and we should be good to go. Thank you so much for joining me on this short video making a half batch of candles. If you want that recipe, I'm going to put that in my Patreon, which is linked in the description box below. And thank you everyone in the community of my Patreon. Um, I love your advice, your input. Everything has just been so amazing. It's just all these kind words. It's nice to have a community of people that may be in the same situation as you and you give advice to and they give advice back to you. It's just like a whole learning thing put together but I have some inventory that I need to do and I have to prepare for an event that I have this Saturday it'll be the last event of the year and I am so looking forward to that because I am just exhausted but thank you all again for joining until next time